With the rate of population growth being higher than ever, it goes without saying that farmers have had to find ways to drastically increase the yield of their crops. And while current farming practices have the effect of damaging the earth in the long term, the same can't be said for regenerative agriculture. But what is this modern form of production? And how is it better for the environment? For all this and more, stay tuned! Let's start by talking about regenerative agriculture as a general farming practice. For those of you who don't know, regenerative farming or refers to the process of growing crops in a holistic, sustainable way. Rather than robbing the soil of all of its nutrients in exchange for a pristine crop yield, the methodologies employed by regenerative farmers ensure that the nutrient content of the soil remains somewhat balanced throughout. This allows for a greater turnover at the end of the day, with little to no constraints being placed on the farmer. And better yet, the earth is left seemingly untouched, after giving rise to a crop yield that some may describe as tasting better as a result. The process the process underlying regenerative agriculture can be quite complicated though, and consists of around five different steps, each of which are important in their own right. The first principle relates to the minimization or elimination of soil disturbances such as tilling, as disturbances such as these often rob soil of useless nutrients. This then leads to the second principle, which has everything to do with keeping the topsoil as rich and healthy as possible. More often than not, this is done through the use of cover crops. The third principle targets the biodiversity of the system and has the farmer planting crops that complement one another and the soil they're growing in. Once again, this leads to the next principle, which is the farmer keeping all roots within for at least a year. The integration of livestock is then considered to be a final step. That's all fine and well, but how does regenerative farming actually work? In order for regenerative farming to be considered as such, the farmer in question shouldn't just maintain his soil. As the name suggests, he actually has to regenerate it by leaving it better off than how he found it. That's a lot easier said than done, though, especially since the majority of farmers have been doing things a specific way for centuries now. And as they say, it's next to impossible for a leopard to change its spots. But as the population of the world is increasing, along with the demand for produce, farmers have had to make a plan. There simply isn't enough land to make use of, which means that farmers have had to run away from practices such as complete crop rotation. And, as you can imagine, this has led to a drastic increase in soil nutrient density. A great way to regenerate soil, while not giving way to complete crop rotation though, is discovering two separate crops that play upon one another's weaknesses. This way, you can rotate the crops without much difficulty, especially when the one uses a nutrient that the other ignores. Think about it, you're allowing the soil to regain its nutrients while being robbed of another set, with the next crop rotation then working on the recovery of the robbed set. It's really as easy as that. The growth of cover crops is also especially important when it comes to regenerative farming, as these prevent soil erosion from taking place. But why is regenerative farming important when it comes to combating climate change? Well, to understand why regenerative farming has been making so many waves in recent years, we have to first understand what the problems surrounding conventional farming methods are. You see, commercial farming is especially resource intensive. More often than not, a farmer will be forced to bleed his soil dry in an attempt to push productivity through the roof the unfortunate result of an overpopulated earth. And, as you can imagine, the more time the farmer spends using a particular piece of soil, the less nutrients are available to draw from. And, since crops need nutrients to grow and add to their overall taste, a lack of nutrients is a real bummer to a farmer. Since regenerative farming focuses more on soil health than anything else, though, the soil is kept in a somewhat nutrient-rich state. This clearly combats the situation in which a farmer has used a piece of land beyond repair, but also comes with other fantastic benefits. First of all, produce grown within a regenerative environment is often far tastier than other crops grown in conventional ways. No doubt the result of these crops having more than enough nutrients to draw from. But more importantly, regenerative farming practices are key in combating global warming. Remember, the agricultural sector is one of the biggest contributors to climate change, with conventional farming methods requiring massive amounts of water and land to make things work. Since the same cannot be said for regenerative farming, carbon dioxide levels have decreased significantly. Does regenerative farming really produce more nutritious food, though? This is hard to say, considering just how new the regenerative farming movement is, but it must be said that current studies have shown some rather fantastic benefits stemming from the practice. And as it turns out, regenerative farming could very well be responsible for the creation of more nutritious food. The Pierre J study, for example, compared the soil health and nutrient density of crops grown exclusively at regenerative and 
unconventional practices. And while the target area wasn't very large, it must be said that the regenerative farming practices took the cake when it came to healthy produce. On average, regenerative farms led to better soil health, which eventually led to higher levels of vitamin K, vitamin E, thiamine, riboflavin, calcium, copper, sodium, and phosphorus in the produce they gave rise to. Vegetables from regenerative farming practices were especially different from conventional farms, showing much higher levels of phytochemicals in the long run. In the same breath, wheat grown on regenerative farms were found to have a far higher density of mineral micronutrients than conventional farms. But the benefits didn't stop there. Believe it or not, beef and pork raised on regenerative farms had about three to nine times more omega-3 fats, along with a healthier ratio of omega-6 fats. Without going into the nitty-gritty of it all, the study showed that farming regeneratively makes an actual difference in the produce grown. But since not many studies have been conducted in total, these results aren't exactly conclusive. Those are far from the only benefits of regenerative farming, though. As it turns out, regenerative farms can operate using far less land than conventional farms, something that becomes pretty obvious when you consider just how long conventional farms need to wait for their used soil to become nutrient-dense once more. Regenerative farms have also shown an overall decrease in GHG emissions, which as we explained earlier, would be absolutely key to combating climate change. And since the industrial food system is responsible for around 40 to 60 percent of all global greenhouse gas emissions, it's about time that the farming community did its part to protect the world. In fact, experts in the industry have even claimed that climate change could be reversed if all conventional farms were somehow converted into regenerative farms overnight. This is due to the increased soil carbon stocks that often result from regenerative farming practices, something that will no doubt be important for the future of the agricultural sector. And as we explained earlier, soil, which is far richer in nutrients, also brings us far better produce at the end of the day. Since we should always strive to grow the best we can, regenerative farming is undoubtedly the way forward, especially when it has also been linked to the creation of drought-resistant soil, which combats the natural disaster by increasing the water-holding capacity of the soil, an absolute game-changer for farms that are battling at the moment with limited rainfall. Suffice to say, regenerative farming is a godsend. But if it's so much better, why are conventional farms still the majority? Well, this has a lot to do with the cost of conversion. As we mentioned earlier, the majority of farms are conventional by nature, and while regenerative farming will no doubt increase the productivity and quality of a farm over time, leading to an increase in profits, there's no doubt that the initial cost is a lot to swallow, especially when a farmer has been farming the same way for generations. But the cost of staying within the conventional methodology may actually be a lot worse than originally expected. At least, that's what the experts are saying at the moment. You see, it used to be the case that cheap energy and quick results were just a farm cycle away. But now that energy is becoming more costly and overused soil has become exhausted, farmers of conventional farms are finding themselves with products that are way below par in comparison. And in a world where people are starting to care about the environment, farming regeneratively will certainly fix you at a higher price on the market. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about the future of farming. What do you think of the process of regenerative farming, though? And how do you feel about the way things are changing? Feel free to let us know in the comments section down below.